Hey you guys, Cindy here. I am so excited to be here with you today talking about this topic about around why does he act so interested and then all of a sudden poof he disappears almost like a ghost but um, but yet it's a little bit different. So I'm going to speak into that today. You know, it can be really challenging, you know, imagine the scene you um, you know, you meet up, you have a lovely dinner, you share in great conversation, you're feeling really connected, you might even talk for two, three hours, share a bottle of wine, you know, he's promised to call you, and then you don't hear anything. So I'm going to share with you the top reasons why that happens and some other phenomenons that are going on in today's dating. This may shock you, the real reasons why and what is happening. So, and it it's quite, it's a little bit different today than it was, you know, say, before the internet, before we had online dating, um, app dating, you know, everything's been, is so accessible. So dating now is a little bit different. However, some fundamental things are still the same with men. Okay, so that scenario that I just shared with you, if you don't know who I am, I'm Cindy Olin, a love and relationship expert. I support women specifically around attracting and keeping the kind of love that really resonates within their heart. So this is around true authentic connection and creating long-term deep connection too. So moving forward, this type of scene may happen, let's say you're on a first, second date, and you know you just you have an amazing time maybe you share a <clears throat> a kiss here's the thing if this is within the first couple dates usually you know even the first date um if you're spending that long of a period of time and you're sharing a lot what can happen with a man is that his curiosity isn't piqued about you anymore. So something inside his chemical makeup isn't that curious about you. He, he doesn't know why, but he's not that driven to call you. He's not that driven to get to know you more. So he, you know, he might just go along his merry way, get distracted, meet someone else. And, you know, meanwhile, you're left there going, gosh, I thought we talked about going to a concert or, you know, doing different things together. The thing is, is that if you're spending too much time in the very, very beginning, that can, you know, there's a such thing as, you know, it's like, I talk about moving slower to move faster late, later on, but to, to, not have all of this time together so you found out so much information. You want to, you know, shorten the lengths of time. Maybe you're spending an hour together. Maybe you're, you know, spending an hour and a half together and you want to leave first. That's an important key within that because that does actually build underlying tension. You may not want to kiss him either. Uh, especially on that first meeting. So, because men will actually look at a couple different things, depending on the kind of guy, um, you know, he'll look at, wow, does she go and spend three, four hours with every guy she goes out with? Does she share this much? Does she, you know, drink wine, kiss him? They will actually think like that. So, the second thing too is depending on where a man is at and men really okay men overall don't have the same amount of options as women do when it comes to sex so men are more at the mercy of a woman saying yes to sex and they are driven by sex however 
you know, many of them do want a real connection, but here's the deal. This may confuse you a little bit and feel free to ask questions, comments, anything like that. But men are only as strong as their options. So let me explain this to you a little bit deeper. Men love to have options. It's, you know, if you ever notice a man at a car dealer or if he's negotiating about a car or car shopping, he's looking at the options. What kind of options does this have? What kind of engine does it have? Um, you know, they're looking for certain options as well. So think about that from an overall perspective men like to have options. So if he has a few different options, he's actually looking for what's the best option that fits with him, right? What's the best option that fits with him? And, you know, if there isn't a true connection for him on his end, then you may not be a real viable option. However, he may do things that lead you to believe there's a possibility there. You know, some people call it breadcrumbing, but I'm going to tell you a couple of things that they will do so you can look at this and you get to decide what you want to do. Do you want to keep this person in your rotation that you talk to once in a while or maybe get together with as your you keep him as an option as you're opening up to bring in your extraordinary love, your right man. So men like to have these options. One, because, well, let me tell you back, way back in the caveman era, what, what happened, is, and this is even true for the animal kingdom, what happens is women tend to flock to one or two men that seem higher on the food chain. So higher on the food chain could mean, you know, what their looks, what they can provide also. That's really important for a woman. And I'm not saying fully on a materialistic level, although that can have something to do with it. It's more along the fact of, is this the kind of man that she can potentially feel safe with? So more women are flocking to a couple of men, and then there's these other men that are, you know, op you know, trying to get to a place where they can provide for a woman in the capacity that they would like to provide in. Meanwhile, they want to make sure that they have options. So they might be talking to different women, and this can hurt to hear this. They might do what's called tethering. Tethering means they, they text message you. So they message you, ask you how you're doing. They might even go into long text message conversations with you and you know, profess really deep feelings. I would not recommend going on a long text message conversation with someone because you're actually building up what's called a fantasy relationship. It does not exist. Got it? So, and he's not making plans to meet you. So if that starts happening, tethering, he's just trying to keep you as an option. He wants to know if you're still out there, if you're still taking the bait that there's something similar around that with haunting. So if a man, you know, you go out on a couple dates with the guy, he disappears and then he comes back, pops back in and says, hello. He, and he does that every now and again. That's what they call haunting. He's just saying hello. He might even try to get together with you, take you on a date every now and again. However, <clears throat> you're an option until he lands on something that he really wants. That's another reason why, because you might be going, well, why is it that when I go out on a date or two with somebody that I meet online, he says, okay, well, we should just to, you know, see how it's going to go with us, just you and I. Well, the reason why they do that is 
they don't want you to go shopping for other options because men know intrinsically on a deeper level that if you meet somebody else, you get intimate with someone else, they know, many of them know, or many of them understand that you form an attachment to a man. And they will soon become history. You forget about them. Maybe you don't forget, but you don't really think about them that much because you're happy on this in this other place with an amazing guy or with the guy that you're connected to. So they want to they want to know, okay, is she still an option for me while I'm on this journey? So um, so haunting will happen. He might just drop in, give you just enough to think that he's possibly interested. And this is so confusing for women, you guys. I am sorry this happens with modern modern day technology. It's so much easier because they can just text you or send you a message, tell you how great you're looking on social media, whatever. The thing is, is that they they want to keep these options, right? You're confused because you think, well, I mean, we've had some really good times together. He's coming back in. Maybe things have changed. Well, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. It's you giving him the space to show up. So if he's truly haunting, your brain doesn't think like this. Most women's brains don't think, well, why would a guy fade out, you know, actually interested and then pull back? Why would he do that? They do it because, again, they're looking to gather their options. They're looking to make a decision. And, you know, I talk to women all the time that say, gosh, I'm just not the kind of person that really likes to date. Well, most women don't. And men don't necessarily love to date either, but they like the idea of options because it feeds their ego. Now, a little, a man that is, has a focus of maybe creating a deep connection eventually, um, may not be into that long term because they're looking to meet the right person. And you might also be thinking, well, how can I turn myself into the real thing instead of an option? Well, I'm going to tell you this. One, you're not available all the time. Two, be you. Be authentic. Call them forward. You know, hey, you know, make some jokes with them. Hey, yeah, it's about that time that you're, you're coming around. It's like clockwork with you every two or three weeks. What's up? You know, have some fun with this. Um, and I, I find that if you're having fun with that and not getting, not being a victim of this, this is why I want you to understand not being a victim of this. If you're not exclusive, if you don't have clarity about exclusivity, you're not exclusive and you can plan on him also sleeping with other women. So you get to look at what do you value? What do you really want? Or, you have that conversation and you make sure you're in a safe space with him. So zombieing is really similar to, I love these terms, aren't they kind of funny? Zombieing is really sim similar to haunting. It's that, you know, coming around, um, you know, some people call it stalking, you know, just around the parameters to see, is it safe for me to get in here? Can I... Can I really, you know, can I really do it? Do I have a chance to maybe spend a little bit of time with her, but not have the responsibility of the commitment? And a lot of men, just like women, are afraid to have that conversation. So that's why it's important to, to you know, open up that conversation. Or if you're in this space where you're, you know, you've spent a little bit of time with him, he disappears. Usually, if you've gone out on more than three dates with him, 
and he disappears, there's typically a fade out. And there's a patterning that goes around the fade out. He doesn't reach out as much. He doesn't get together with you as often. You might find yourself reaching out more. That's a fade out. So he's he's either, a couple things have happened. He's either met somebody that's intrigued him a little bit more, or he's decided that what is happening between you isn't, you know, isn't what he wants, right? And a lot of times men and women do this, they'll look for something else that is an upgrade that they want to spend time with in, you know, which kind of softens the blow, right? And the thing is, is that you can't expect in, you know, I'm, I would be really leery of a man, you know, saying, oh, let's just date, you know, one another. Now, some men don't have a lot of time. They don't want to mess with it. They think, you know, you seem like a nice person. Let's take the time to get to know each other. However, that's where you get to pace them, slow them down, let them know you're not ready for that, but you really enjoy, you know, you really enjoy getting to know them better because, it takes time to get to know people. So Mary you said that happened to you. It was off and on for two years. Yep, long personal loving text messages. Um, yep, haunting, ghosting. She finally blocked him. Yeah, I mean, and there's other reasons why men do this too. Women do it as well. It's because they're not available. They're not 100% available. And things to look at, there's another term that I learned recently that I liked called pocketing. Pocketing's where you might be dating him, getting to know him, and then he doesn't really take you around his friends or family, which is awkward after a, a little bit of time. And then, you know, the connection starts to feel weird because it's really not growing. Right. So that's where you mirror him and you're not dating them exclusively. You're not, you know, integrating him into your life either, because clearly it's not that direction. And communication around this, you guys, is so freaking key in, you know, opening up that, um, you know, I like to call it transparency. It just authenticity of, you know, look, I'm, you know, here's where I'm at. I'm going to be really honest. And if you have a guy that's texting you a lot and not making plans, I would stop messaging them. I would do your own fade out and get a, you know, gather up some options in your corral, date them because that takes your attention off of possibly the one guy that you're really interested in. And I wouldn't get involved too quickly because chances are, again, they're victim, not, you know, they're, they're falling prey to the, to what they feel is the best option at the time. The best option, you seem nice, you seem attractive, you seem this, she's going to sleep with me, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they might like that for a while. And we all get distracted, right? And men are hunters by nature. So it's, you know, and it's not about playing hard to get. It's always letting them know that you're receptive, you're interested. However, you could be hard to keep if they're going to act in that capacity, that tethering, that ghosting, that haunting, you know, be cognitively aware of this is what's happening. I hope this helped you guys today. And this is, to, you know, don't make men the enemy, you guys. It's just, it's by a lot, it's in their biological makeup. However, there are different types of men out there, but most of them feel this way biologically. 
and they are ultimately going to choose the woman that they feel the best around you know if that's what they're looking for and they may tell you hey i'm looking for this i'm looking for the real deal but their actions don't show that watch their actions and see what happens and don't make excuses for them don't get intimate too quick and honor you and i'm going to talk about ways that ways of being that will support you around honoring yourself, especially if you've been through past relationships, past trauma that has, you know, made you really question yourself, not trust yourself, therefore translating into not trusting men. So we're going to do some work around what that looks like and how to move through it so you can move forward and not give anyone from the past that doesn't deserve your energy your energy any longer hope this helps sending you so much love please let me know if you have questions comments share this with a woman that needs to hear this today lots of love to you have an amazing rest of your thursday Bye.